Hey y'all, this is going to be a mess of a video. I just sat down to edit this thing and realized that my 22 minutes of raw footage has absolutely no sound. I don't know why the microphone did not pick up anything, but it just obviously did not connect correctly. So I'm going to do this the fake way because I can't bother to set up the camera again and change clothes and move rooms. So I'm just going to do a voiceover. So excuse the fact that nothing that I'm saying is going to match what you're seeing other than I'm going to try to time what I say to the books. So stick with me on this one. Okay, the first new release that I got is from an Australian author, Kirsty Manning, uh, and this is published by William Morrow. It came out as a paperback original, and it is one of those dual timeline books. It starts in 1939, where two young girls meet in Shanghai, and then as World War II looms, these two girls are torn apart. And then it also deals with 2016, where one of the, the girls, now a woman, is fleeing London and going uh, back to Australia to be with her grandparents. And she starts to realize that her family has mysteries and secrets that they've been keeping forever. And so it's, it's a way of tying those two different links, uh, those stories together. And that's the Song of the Jade Lily by Kirsty Manning. The next one is a Southern novel by Mary Miller called Biloxi uh, for Biloxi, Mississippi. She is a Mississippi writer. And this is the story of, I guess not middle age, but late middle age, uh, a man named Lewis McDonald who's 63, his wife's left him, his father's died, and he quits his job with the sense that he's going to inherit some money. And it's kind of that transitional period. And what really becomes interesting is that he ends up adopting a dog and that changes his life. So I'm all here for a dog story and about men with diabetes. Uh, this might hit a little too close to home for me. The next one is Mistress of the Ritz by Melanie Benjamin. Uh, I've read Melanie Benjamin's, I guess her most recent book, which was um, The Girls in the Picture, and I enjoyed that quite a bit. Um, but this one just debuted, and it's already on the indie bestsellers, bestsellers list, and so it's getting some advance notice. And it's set at the Hotel Ritz in Paris in the 1930s, which is kind of the height of the cultural world. People like Hemingway and Fitzgerald and Coco Chanel, etc., come in and out of this hotel. But as the Germans sweep into Paris, and they set up headquarters at the Ritz, their whole world is turned upside down. And so this is about those changes, about the relationships among all these different people, and some secrets and stories that might actually bring the Ritz itself down. So that is Mistress of the Ritz by Melanie Benjamin. The next one is a, a female dystopian book. Um, the Farm by Joanne Ramos. It's set in the New York Hudson Valley and it's a luxury retreat where people are pampered and you get everything you could possibly want. And it's free. In fact, they're paying you to stay there. The catch is you can't leave for the nine months you're there because you're there to produce the perfect baby for somebody else is the way this one is set up. So this is one of those stories that takes something that sounds wonderful on the surface and flips it. Uh, now, Britta Bowler recently read this one. I think it was in her, her May wrap-up called uh, Tops and Flops. And unfortunately for her, it wasn't as successful as I would have hoped. Um, so I'm still going to look forward to reading this one, but I'm a little bit less anxious to get to it now that I've seen that Britta did not enjoy it. But that's The Farm by Joanne Ra Ramos. The next one is The River by Peter Heller, who is the best-selling author of The Dog Stars. Uh, this is the story of two college friends who decide to go on a wilderness canoe trip in northern Canada. And they're expecting just a very calm, idyllic trip. And suddenly they're thrown into an experience with a potential wildfire. And while they're canoeing along in the water, they, um, they come across a couple who seems to be arguing 
Uh, and then when they try to find the couple to warn them, they can't find them. But then the next morning they see the man alone and they wonder what happened to the the woman. So there's a little bit of a mystery here. Um, there's also the wilderness survival aspect of the story. And the couple people I've heard from who have talked about this book have really given it high praise. So I'm looking forward to that one, The River by Peter Heller. The next one caused me a little bit of FOMO at Book Expo. It's Ask Again Yes by Mary Beth Keen. And Mary Beth Keen was actually signing the finished copy and giving them out at Book Expo. And I know Russell and Kendra both got to chat with her briefly, but I knew I was already getting one in the mail, so I decided not to be greedy and try to get another one that was signed. Uh, but now I kind of wish I had gotten one signed so I could give this one away to someone else. But this is the story of two families who are neighbors in the suburbs and it covers 40 years and the tagline for this book is how much can a family forgive so there's obviously something heartbreaking that happens between these families and their children and it's about the relationships and how they develop because of those events between the two families it gives me a little bit of a celeste ing vibe but i'm not sure if that's accurate or not that's ask again yes by mary beth keen The next one is The Summer Country by Lauren Willig. This is a historical novel. Um, it's set in the 1950s in Barbados. The main character is the daughter of a, an English vicar, and she finds out that she has inherited a plantation in Barbados, a sugar plantation, when her grandfather dies, and it's a property no one even knew he owned. Uh, when she gets there for her new life in Barbados, she finds that basically this is a burnt out shell of a property. Uh, it was destroyed back in 1816. Uh, and there are all sorts of rumors about the property, but what she finds really unusual is that everybody else seems to want to buy it. So the bulk of this book is the mysteries from her family and how this property came to be like it is. So it's set in the 1950s in Barbados, The Summer Country by Lauren Willig. And the last one is a UK novel by Richard Roper called How Not to Die Alone. And the tagline on the cover is, it's never too late to start living. This is about a man, Andrew, who has worked as a public health official for years and his job involves searching for the next of kin of those people who die alone uh, but he goes home every night to a loving family or at least that's what he's let his co-workers believe the truth is he is alone and he's very protective and defensive about that and then he meets another employee a new employee named peggy comes into the office and Andrew's faced with the decision about whether to come clean about his lie or to shut Peggy off and risk losing something that could be potentially very um, important to him. So it's, it's a story that's described as smart and darkly funny and life-affirming. And so I got a little bit of an Ele Eleanor Oliphant vibe from this one, but we'll see. And that is How Not to Die Alone by Richard Roper. Okay, so there you have it, uh, eight new books that I have received recently from publishers. Thank you to the publishers. I've listed all the titles and authors and publishers below. They're all available now in your independent bookstore if you're in the United States. Please check them out or get them from your library. If you're planning to read any of these or if you've already read some of them, please let me know your thoughts in the comments below as I work through potential candidates for next year's BookTube prize. And once again, I'm sorry for the bizarre nature of this video. Uh, I just couldn't face filming it twice. And so I just did a voiceover for the parts that I had already filmed. And we're just going to have to leave it at that. Uh, the world of book hauls. Have a great week, everybody. I'll probably see you tomorrow with my Friday Reads video, my weekly catch up. Uh, but until then, have a great day. Bye-bye.